Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I am Grognax, and today we will be delving into Fallout 4. Fallout 4 has one of the best armor modding systems in modern gaming. So haven't you ever thought to yourself, wouldn't it be fun to not use it and play the entire game in just your vault suit? No, probably not. But that's what we're going to do today. We're going to see if we can beat Fallout 4 in just your vault suit. Yep, this should be fun and not hard at all. <laughs> Shut up! Just a few ground rules right off the bat. The vault suit will be allowed to be upgraded, which by the level I finished the game only happens once, up to level 2. Also, non-combat effective clothing will be allowed, mainly just charisma enhanced clothing for bartering and successful speech checks. I'm going to interject real quick before we get back to the game. For pretty much every playthrough I do, I place a few water purifiers to aid with my cash flow. If you haven't seen my video on how to absolutely own water purifiers, I'll put the link in the description down below. Now, to beat the game, you don't have to talk to Codsworth and help Preston Garvey at the Museum of Freedom. But, in my opinion, a gameplay is not complete if you don't beat the Deathclaw at the end of this mission. Typically, it's not that hard of an accomplishment, but with no power armor and no minigun, it will be substantially harder. I also will be trying to beat the game as soon as possible, so I won't be grinding to stack stim packs and ammo. Speaking of Deathclaws, this part was very stressful. After nearly dying trying to get off the roof of the museum, I race to trigger the Deathclaw from the sewer so that he can take out the raiders for me. This was certainly not an uneventful fight. I try using the junk truck to blow up the Deathclaw, but it doesn't work very well at all. I end up having to dump clip after clip into this Deathclaw from multiple different weapons. And because I'm as soft as Spongebob, <laughs> down in Bikini Bottom, I had to cheese him from inside this building. The way the AI works in this game is tough for this technique, because enemies run away and hide specifically so you can't cheese them this way. Now this Deathclaw does something I've never seen before. He lifts the truck up over the house. Now I've played many a playthrough on this game, and I have never seen a Deathclaw do that before. I got quite a kick out of it. Now let's just finish off this Deathclaw and continue on our journey. Uh, next we will talk to Mama Murphy real quick, just to get the Diamond City map marker out of her, and then we will head to Diamond City. On my way to the Great Green Jewel of the Commonwealth, I find two jackasses trying to extort a mother and her son. So I promptly put a few bullets into their heads. After a fairly uneventful journey, I make my way to Diamond City, and I find two brothers in an altercation, with one accusing the other of being a synth. But Diamond City security ends it before it can escalate. The brother that gets gunned down falls in a rather awkward manner. I got a little bit of a chuckle out of this. Ah, the poor bastard. Jeez. She fell funny. Now it's time to go see Ellie at the detective agency, where after a short bit of dialogue, she tells us Nick is missing and that his last known location was at the Park Street subway station. Upon arrival, we find the place littered with triggermen, and if we kill one named Dino, we can set Valentine free. I finally find good old Nick Valentine, and after talking with him for a little bit, I convince him to help me find Sean. I take care of a few more triggermen as Nick and I try to navigate our way out of the vault. But before we can manage to make our way out of the vault, we get confronted by Skinny Malone and his personal bodyguards, who try acting tough, but unfortunately for them, it does not work out. That wasn't the plan originally, but hey, tempting. Time to give you both the hard goodbye. <laughs> Anybody? 
After discussing the kidnapping with Nick, we investigate the residence of a man named Kellogg, where we find he has a secret safe room full of good loot and a bit of evidence to help us find Sean. The game has been fairly easy up until this point. Using only the vault suit has not caused much of a hindrance, but that is all about to change. The battle with Kellogg is pretty challenging. I died and had to reload a previous save five or six times. And in good old fashioned bad luck, I lost most of that footage. So I had to use footage from a different playthrough. But after a long and difficult battle, I managed to fill Kellogg with enough lead to put this sick puppy down. I head on outside to fast travel on over to meet Amari in the memory den to get Kellogg's brain analyzed when I see the impressively fortified Zeppelin of the Brotherhood of Steel flying overhead. Amari must be some kind of force-wielding Jedi because she never even actually touches Nick while analyzing Kellogg's cybernetics. Through Kellogg's memories, I learn I must find a man named Virgil, who is supposedly hiding from the Institute in the Glowing Sea. I make sure to stock up on lots of Radaway and Radex before I attempt to traverse the harshly unforgiving conditions of the Glowing Sea. I encounter a Rad Scorpion that, to my surprise, I actually fare pretty well against. Perhaps the vault suit is more viable than I originally thought. Hmm, maybe not. We'll have to see. A large pack of feral ghouls decides to attack me. To their dismay, my shotgun tears right through them. I get excited when I see that one of them is in fact a legendary. A legendary weapon could be very useful for a soft character like this. But of course, once I kill it, all I find is a legendary piece of armor which is absolutely useless in this playthrough. I make my way to Virgil, where he tells me that in order to reach the Institute, I need to kill a Courser and retrieve his Courser chip. I will be able to use the Courser chip data in conjunction with the schematics Virgil will give us to teleport into the Institute. Virgil directs us to the CIT ruins, where we pick up the Courser signal. If we follow it, it brings us to the Green Tech Genetics Building, a tall, green, kind of oddly shaped building. But inside we find a slew of gunners that we can hear battling someone or something that isn't us. That something, of course, is the Institute Courser. It took me probably ten times to kill this Courser, mainly because I kept blowing myself up with the Fat Man, which was the only weapon I had that was even remotely effective against it. But after just a couple Fat Man shots, the Courser was dead and done. And we can now loot the Courser chip off of his lifeless corpse. I just want to take a second to point out that this is one of the reasons I absolutely love this game. The immense scale and the beauty of this scene alone, it's absolutely awe-inspiring, and I love it. On my way to the railroad to have the Courser chip analyzed, I encounter my second legendary enemy, and again, my hopes are filled with the thoughts of a legendary weapon. After killing it and searching it for loot, yes, there it is, the knee capper 10mm pistol. And in this playthrough, I have invested in the gunslinger perk, so this weapon is incredibly viable, especially for larger, more powerful enemies. At the railroad headquarters, Tinker Tom will decode the chip for us as long as we promise Desdemona she can keep it afterwards. From there, we bring the data back to Virgil and receive the schematics. And then I immediately start building the signal interceptor in Sanctuary. With the interceptor built, we are now ready to travel through the Institute. And boom, there we are at the Institute. I talk to Father, where he tries to convince me the Institute is not evil. And then, he sends me on a variety of quests, including retrieving the synth at Libertalia, which was pretty difficult because the guy at the top kept killing me with a mini-nuke. Also, Father sent me to the Bunker Hill to retrieve four synths with a courser. This is one of the easier quests, especially if you're still allied with all of the factions. In this playthrough, I sided against the Brotherhood already. The synths are teleported, 
and I head back outside, where I find a synth being a real dickhead. Yeah, just look at that. After you report your success at Bunker Hill to Father, he sends you to Mass Fusion to retrieve the Beryllium Agitator. This was yet another long and hard-fought battle. You can easily get through most of the game in your vault suit, but it's battles like this that put your skills to the test. The hardest part of this mission, by far, is defeating the Sentry Bot and Assaultrons after you pick up the Brillium Agitator. I don't have too much trouble taking down the Sentry Bot, other than whittling down its massive health pool. But the Assaultrons are a different story. I use a ton of chems and even a stealth boy to try and evade them, which after about 10 attempts finally works. When we talk to Father after retrieving the Beryllium Agitator, he informs us that the railroad cannot be allowed to continue operations, and with the railroad being my least favorite faction, I happily agree to take care of them. With the railroad gone, I talk to Father once again, where he gives me my final and most challenging task. I must now eliminate the Brotherhood of Steel. This was absolutely, by far, the hardest part of the game. My vault suit is no match for the Brotherhood's energy weapons. Not to mention, there are dozens of enemies inhabiting Boston Airport, many of which are named NPCs with large health pools and do plenty of damage. I died easily 30 times trying to accomplish this mission. The portion of the mission when you have to defend the synth uploading the virus into Liberty Prime was particularly difficult because you can get shot from almost any angle and have almost no cover. But after many, many attempts, the synth completes the upload, and the glorious Optimus, I mean, uh, Liberty Prime, shoots a powerful laser beam at the Pridwin, destroying it and the Brotherhood of Steel. I teleport back to the Institute for one final conversation with Father. And with that, I have beaten Fallout 4 with just my vault suit. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like and subscribe to my channel. If you have any suggestions for future videos, leave a comment in the comment section below. I have been Grognax, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and thank you very much for watching.